St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And a happy Easter to each and every one of you. As we begin this Eucharist, which is made possible by a contribution from Maria Van Den Breckel from Brampton, Ontario, this Mass is being offered in memory of her husband in thanksgiving for all the support she has received from family and friends and for peace all over the world. By choosing to remember your husband in this way, you are joined by thousands of people across Canada. And on their behalf, I thank you. And now to celebrate this Eucharist more worthily, let us call to mind the fact that we are sinners and that we confess our sins. We ask the Lord to give us the peace that he gave on Easter Sunday. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us praise God as we say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. In the glory of God, with the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit to reach the joys of eternal life. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon, and a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms, Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And the man fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, the man stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, 
make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus from about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And Jesus said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there these, in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? And they replied, Things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some, of, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they came, did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who had said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us. 
because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized Jesus, and he vanished from their sight. The two disciples said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. These were saying, The Lord indeed has risen, and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples told what had happened on the road and how the Lord was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Every now and then, the priest is faced with the dilemma of having so many beautiful images and imageries to pray about and contemplate on that he doesn't know where to start. And today is one of those days, the beautiful reading done by Mary in the first from the Acts of the Apostle, where Peter and John say to the lame man, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis has said, we are a poor church for the poor. And this image of Peter and John gives the poor church a, a courage and a hope to rise up and to walk. Our gospel also is flooded with images. The two men walking away from Jerusalem, although Jesus had told them to stay in Jerusalem, their shoulders bent, we had hoped, a sign of despair. Then walking along, their hearts burning when Jesus is speaking to them, the emotions that they felt. And then finally, they recognize him in the breaking of the bread. And then that sudden speed of going back to Jerusalem, beautiful images that we can pray, which represent our own journey in this kingdom of God. Recently in Barbados, I had met Sister Teresa Fredericks, former sister, Ursuline sister June Pinkerton, and the others. And I did not recognize them, nor did they recognize me. We hadn't met for many years. We had put on weight, our hair had grown white, or at least what we have has grown white. And so it was quite obvious that we would say, the face looks familiar, but I can't remember the name. The apostles had no, the two disciples had no reason to have that excuse. They had just been with Jesus for three years, and he had, they had been with him only three days ago, and yet they could not recognize him. In fact, we have more than one occasion of people who had walked with Jesus not recognizing him. Mary thought he was a gardener in the tomb in where he had been buried. She could not recognize him until Jesus called her by name. The companions of Peter just thought there was a man on the shore. And when there was a miraculous catch of fishes, 153 of them, they said, it is the Lord. Now the disciples could not recognize Jesus until he broke bread with them. Why did they have all these difficulties? And the reason is that the scriptures tell us the same story, but they write it in such a way to increase our faith. Mary Magdalene recognized Jesus when he called her by name. It's something that reminds me of our baptism. When I ask the parents at the beginning of baptism, what name do you give to your child? They hardly look at me. They look at the child as if to say, this child is, and they give the name. And in doing so, they do two things. One, they seem to give an identity to the child. Secondly, they hold him and say, this child is mine. And then at the end of baptism, I give them a baptismal candle and say, keep the flame burning brightly. When the Lord calls you again by name and welcomes into you into the kingdom of God. Our story today of the disciples on the road to Emmaus teaches of another sacrament of faith, the breaking of bread. 
They could not recognize Jesus until he explained to them the scriptures. The breaking of bread, the blessing of bread, the giving of bread would have meant nothing until he explained the scriptures to them. And that is why it is so very important in our sacrifice the Mass to pay great attention to the first reading, to the psalm, to the gospel acclamation, to the gospel, before we can enter into the breaking of bread. Unfortunately, all too often, we are busy thinking about other things. Mass actually starts when we are at home, as we come towards the church, and only then we can recognize Jesus in the breaking of bread. The apostles could not recognize him because they had preconceived ideas of what the Lord should be, how he should rise, and whether he should restore the, the kingdom from the Romans. Our disappointment nowadays is because we expect God to act in a certain way, expect our family to, expect, uh, to behave in a certain way, expect our friends to behave in a certain way. And so often we are disillusioned, we are discouraged because they don't. We get angry, we cry, we get upset. If only we could open our hearts and our minds so that the God of surprises can speak to us. And then we will recognize Jesus who walks with us in our journey. God bless you all. Let us pray now. <clears throat> For the church, may she continue to proclaim the Easter message to all people that Christ lives and through him the earth is filled with goodness. We pray to the Lord. For the leaders of the world, that may they be tolerant to all religions, allowing worshippers to practice their faith without fear, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those who have distanced themselves from us for, and from the Lord, may they rediscover in him as they walk with him through their prayers, words, and actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the sponsor of our Mass today and for all of you who have written in asking for prayers, those suffering from Alzheimer's and, and cancer, those suffering from Parkinson's and other diseases that cripple us, and for those who take care of our sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise you and ask you to listen to our prayers and answer them. In the name of the risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this wine and water, may we share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice in your hands, and the praise of your name. Lord, our good and good qualities of Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us the salvation of mind and body, we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. 
but during this season, above all, to lord you even more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. We join them as we sing. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Basil, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Our thanks to Maria van den Breckel from Brampton, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. The National Catholic Mission 2013, the Year of Faith, is available on DVD. The total cost for the two programs, $20. Call 1-888-383-6277 between 8.30 and 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time if you'd like to place an order.